you know, this pattern is getting weirder and weirder by the upload. I post a Genshin Impact gameplay video and then I roast the game right after. I guess in a way it shows that I have a love-hate relationship with the game. But in 2022, my eye has been opened. I realized that this game is much, much worse than I initially imagined. Once upon a time, in a year so divine called 2021, the Genshin goddess herself gets announced. In awe of her cutthroat personality and abilities, I start looking for ways to get as many primos as I can. This was a 50-50 I did not want to lose, so I put mad hours into the game, under the impression that if I worked hard enough, I'd have enough primos to guarantee right in spot in my squad. As unrealistic as that sounds, I was determined. And luckily, all my hard work paid off. LET'S GO! But as I was scouring the internet looking for any nook and cranny I could go through just to obtain even the smallest amount of premium currency, I happened upon the one thing every guide has mentioned. The Spiral Abyss. Or, at least the end of it. I mean, who didn't get Shangling? Didn't really pique my interest until I saw that it forks over 600 whole smackaroons. So I'm like, that's one big ass amount of primos. I gathered my strongest units, which believe it or not, consisted of Razor, Bennett, Venti, and fucking physical DPS Rosaria. I'd clear a level or two, but then difficulty hit me, mostly because none of my characters were even close to being on the brink of level 80. But I made a good haul for primos and I just forgot about it. That is, until my Raiden hit level 80. But even then, I was still a noob to this game. Hell, I even preferred the prototype to the catch simply because I didn't want to grind their shitty fishing minigames. <laughs> but the Abyss really hit me like a ton of bricks. My units didn't suck, they just weren't built right. You're probably thinking, well, I don't see any problem, you just had to learn. I thought the same thing, until I started Abyss level 12. Excuse me, level 95 enemies? That's like, five more levels than max level. I just cut my losses and gave up on it. After clearing weekly bosses, beating domains, and wasting my time punishing the A button during pointless events, I was hungry for a challenge. A real test of my skills and of how strong my characters really were. And what better way to do that than the Spiral Abyss? After extensive video watching, months of dedication, write and funneling, artifact searching, and a wish upon a banner, not a star, as of 2.6, I finally, FINALLY cleared floor 12. And throughout my journey, I realized, man, the Spiral Abyss really is one of the worst interpretations of endgame content ever created. In all of my years playing RPGs, both turn-based and free combat, I've never encountered so much bullshit in my life. One of the main issues I have with the Abyss is the DPS check aspect of it. Now, as a fan of Monster Hunter, I don't have a problem with DPS checks. I relatively think it's a good way to reassess your strategies and find out what works to complete your mission in the most efficient and effective way possible. After the first time killing a monster, I start to learn their patterns, their weak spots. I craft specific weapons and armors to use to protect myself while also dealing more damage to the enemy. After each try, I always feel like I'm becoming smarter and stronger, finishing the job in lesser amounts of time. Whereas Genshin takes that idea and makes it as obnoxious as possible. Because let's be real, 3 minutes is nowhere near enough time to take down elemental shields and eat away at bosses with 2 billion health unless you have the absolute best builds for your units down to the substats on your artifacts. The difference between Genshin's DPS check and Monster Hunter's DPS check is that Monster Hunter gives you more than enough time to defeat the monster you're fighting as the main difficulty is in the fight itself, not in how fast you are completing it. But in Genshin, it's fucking both. Because not only do you have to deal with one-shotting attacks, status ailments like increased cooldowns and stolen energy from bursts, or bullshit moves that just slap a logo above your HP bar and makes it disappear just as fast as my will to live, but you have to do it all in three fucking minutes. And that's if you hit or kill any of the enemies at all. With every Mihoryo update comes a brand new bullshit enemy with brand new bullshit tactics. One of the most annoying things in the Abyss is the fact that so many of their enemies teleport. Yes, even whole bosses. So you could just be sitting there unleashing ultimates for that huge chunk of damage, but whoops! That motherfucker Barry Allen to the other side of the room, and now you have to start over because you'd rather go back to the beginning with all of your ultimates online instead of manually getting your energy back up by means of elemental skills. Mihoyo and their band of cocksucking sadists intricately programmed the Spiral Abyss to have enemies and effects take up as much time as possible. 
Every time Mihoryo adds a new bad guy, they usually have a bullshit mechanic that they can use and abuse in the Spiral Abyss. That's why there's no shortage of Whopper Flowers, because they teleport, Rift Hounds, Kaigari, Elementally Shielded Mita Charles, and Abyss Heralds, and in terms of the most recent version of the Abyss, Magu Kenken and the Array, because they deal abysmally heavy amounts of damage, whilst establishing jarring status ailments, barely stagger and or have tanky amounts of health. All of these enemies are specifically programmed to waste as much time or eat as much health as possible, whichever comes first. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like I mentioned before, once you hit 12, the level of the enemies go over max level, all the way to level 100. This is utter bullshit. Why? Because Mihoryo doesn't think that a max level character should be strong enough to clear their end game content. Nah, that would actually make sense. Instead, your max level character only gives you a small boost in power. The real strength is in the artifacts you have. But not only the artifacts, again, that would make too much sense, it's in the substats. The RNG on top of the RNG of the main stat, on top of the RNG of getting the right set of artifacts, on top of the RNG of getting the artifact in the first place. This is where so many of my grinding hours went. Beyond stupid, hair-pulling, ulcer-inducing, mind-raping, artifact searching. Remember when I said I cleared all floors? Yeah, that was also by the skin of my teeth. I couldn't just have fun and utilize different strategies. I had to get things down to a science. Everything had to be frame perfect. So frame perfect, in fact, that if I missed an input, or if I didn't get a crit on an ult, if an enemy doesn't group with the rest, or if I didn't dodge one attack, or if I didn't have a certain amount of ultimates heading into the next level, it drastically affected my finishing time. Especially when you consider the Abyss Heralds in 2.6. But after the update, I can't even complete it in 2.7, because the Kenki and the Array simply have too much goddamn health. At first, I was glad they removed the Abyss Heralds and their shitty shields. It took up too much time, and it wasn't decided by how strong your characters were in terms of total DPS. It was a leap of faith. I saw the bosses, and I thought they had it in the bag, but somehow they made it worse than the elemental shields. Now they have so much health that not even an ultimate dealing 10k damage a hit for 20 hits puts a dent in them! I've put out all the stops. I've tried so many team comps, I've done so much switching and searching just hoping that if I do this perfectly I can just scrape by and edge out another clear, but I couldn't, simply because the RNG gods refused to bless me with god tier substats. Now I'd love to sit here and break down the bullshit of artifacts, but I've already kept you here long enough, so I'm gonna have to cut it for now. Yeah, it's kind of cheap. I usually don't like to make two-parters, but I know you can only hear the sound of my ear-grating voice for so long. Don't worry. Tune in next week, and I'll tell you all about it.